Hello class, we're going to start now. Um, the It's not unit one, it's unit two. But we're going to start working on section P.6, which is the rectangular coordinate system. Um, and so we're going to start off with talking about how to plot points in the Cartesian plane, which is also known as the rectangular system, rectangular coordinate system. So um, just as you can represent real numbers by points on a real number line, you can also represent ordered pairs of real numbers by points in a plane called the rectangular coordinate system, the cart or even it's called the Cartesian plane. And it's named after a French mathematician, Rene Descartes. Um, so two real number lines intersecting at right angles so there are right angles here, 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 and here, um, form the Cartesian plane. And so this number line is called the x-axis, and this number line is called the y-axis. Well, that x-axis and that y-axis intersect here in the middle at what's called the origin, okay? And when you create these um, axes, you essentially turn the plane into four regions, um, this being quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. It goes counterclockwise, starting at the top right. And in quadrant one, you'll notice that the, um, the X values are positive and the Y values are positive. And I'll talk about why I put them in this order as soon as I get to the next page, okay? In quadrant two though, the X values are negative and the Y values are positive. In quadrant three, the X values are negative and the Y values are also negative. And finally in quadrant four, the X values are positive, but the Y values are negative. And so you'll see that depending on what the signs of each number are, it really does tell you where this point uh, what region or what quadrant this point will lie in. So um, a horizontal real number line, the one that goes flat line, okay, that one is called the x-axis. And then the vertical one, like a wall, that one is called your, uh, your y-axis, okay? Where the two intersect in the middle, that's called your origin. And then it breaks everything up into four regions, which is called your quadrants, okay? Each point in the plane corresponds to what is called an ordered pair, where X and Y are real numbers and they're called the coordinate. So the X coordinate and the Y coordinate. And the order matters. If you have a number in the first spot, it represents the X value. If you have a number in the second spot, it represents the Y value, okay? So uh, the X coordinate represents the directed distance from the Y axis to a certain place, okay? So if it's positive, it's directed in the positive X axis direction. And if the X coordinate is negative, it's directed in the negative X axis. Um, now for the Y coordinate, same thing. If it's positive, it will be moving toward the positive Y axis. And if the Y coordinate were negative, it'd be moving in the uh, negative Y axis direction. Um, so each value is, what is in the X coordinate spot tells you how many units it goes. And depending on whether it's positive or negative, that'll tell you which direction it moves in, okay? Um, and then, Oops, let's see this there. Okay, there we go. Now the notation parentheses x, y denotes a point in the number plane on an open interval on the real number line. The context will tell you which meaning is intended, okay? So basically when we use parentheses and we have two values and a comma in between, it could mean a point or it could mean an open interval, okay? You really have to pay attention to what the problem is about in order to tell the difference 
um, of whether they're talking about the coordinates of a point or whether they're talking about an open interval, okay? Normally when they start asking you for domain and range, um, that is referring to intervals or even solutions to inequalities. You'll be talking about intervals, okay? But when you're graphing, parentheses and a comma in between represents a point, okay? So let's keep going. So here it says, the beauty of a rectangular coordinate system is that it allows you to see relationships between two variables. It would be difficult to overestimate the importance of Descartes' introduction of coordinates in the plane. Today, his ideas are more common commonly used in virtually every scientific and business related field. I mean, think about when people were having these meetings, they always wanna see the um, production or the profits in the images of a graph, okay? So they could see whether it's improving or um, declining and getting worse, okay? So we definitely use this as visuals to represent data. So the first example says plotting the points, plot these points, one, two, three, four, five different points, okay? Um, and so then they try to explain the first point and then similarly, they follow the same thing for the other four points, okay? So for the first point, negative one, two, um, it says imagine a vertical line through negative one on the X axis and a horizontal line through two on the y-axis. The intersection of these two lines is the point negative one, two, okay? So they're saying basically you need to go, negative one means one unit to the negative side of the x-axis. So you go backwards one unit. Then positive two for the y-coordinate means I'm going to go up two units from there, okay? Now, when you're plotting points, you can plot, you can, go up two first and then back one, or you can go back one and then up two. You'll still get to the same location, which is what you're trying to do, is plot that location of where that point would lie, okay? Now, similarly for three, four, that's a positive three X value, right? So you're gonna go over to positive three for the X value, and then you're going to go up one, two, three, four units for the Y value and you'll get the location of the point three, four. Now zero, zero means you do not move left or right for X and you do not move up or down for Y. So you are literally there at the origin and the coordinates of the origin are zero, zero. Okay, now for the point three comma zero. In that case, your X value is a positive three, but since your Y coordinate is zero, you do not move up or down you stay at this location. And so the point there is on top of the x-axis. And then lastly, for the point um, negative two, negative three, you would go left two units for x, and then you would go down three units for um, the negative three y-coordinate. And you're left in this location here. Now, once we know how to plot points, um, some other helpful information would be um, knowing how to find the distance between two points, okay? And so when we're trying to find the distance between two points, we want to use, incorporate um, the Pythagorean theorem, okay? So this is a, an idea that's adopted from geometry. It says that from, for the Pythagorean theorem, a right triangle with hypotenuse of length C and sides of links A and B, you have this rule here, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, okay? And that's called the Pythagorean theorem. Um, and it says the converse is also true. Um, that is that A squared plus B squared equals C squared, then the triangle is automatically a right triangle, okay? Now the hypotenuse, if you have to have a right triangle, which means you need to have a right angle. So this is an acute angle. This is an acute angle, but it has to have a right angle, 
okay? Across from that right angle is C, which is the hypotenuse, okay? And then the other two sides are just called legs. They don't go in any particular order. You could write B squared plus A squared just as easily as you wrote A squared plus B squared, okay? But this would be a leg and this would be a leg. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about how that turned into the distance formula, okay? So we have something called the distance formula and it says, suppose you want to determine the distance D between two points, X1, Y1. They have coordinates, I don't know what they are. So they just gave them subscripts. So X1 and Y1, and then the second point being X2, Y2, okay? These two points can form a right triangle. If you were to put this one all the way down, just draw a dotted line all the way, and then draw a horizontal line going all the way this way, where they intersect, if you plot a point there, you can notice that you do create this triangle here, okay? And then there's a length here. So if I were to count, I would know how high this goes. And if I were to count, I would know how long this one is. Once you know the length of one side and the length of the other side, you can use that Pythagorean theorem to figure out the length of the other side, okay? So the Pythagorean theorem tells us that the leg, the horizontal um, leg like this is the two X values subtracted from each other, but you have to take the absolute value of that so that you get a positive value for the, the distance, okay? Then the vertical distance, which is Y2 minus Y1, um, you could take that. So you have the distance of one leg squared plus the distance of another leg squared should equal the um, hypotenuse squared, okay? And what we're trying to do is you're trying to find that length of that hypotenuse. So you can take the square root of both sides. And so now you have the square root of this. Now, if you're going to square something, you don't need to put absolute value bars because regardless if this number was positive or negative, when you square it, it will be positive, okay? So I don't need the bars telling me, make sure that it's positive because when I square it, it will be positive. So notice how they don't need the bars here, okay? It's just parentheses. And so then this essentially does become the distance formula that we will use to find the distance between two points, okay? You subtract the X coordinates together, you subtract the Y coordinates together, and then you square both of those quantities, add them together, and then eventually take the square root of that um, combined quantity. So for example, if they ask you to find the distance between two points, negative two, one, and three, four, um, you're basically going to label them. So this is the X coordinate of the first point, the Y coordinate of the first point, the x coordinate of the second point and the y coordinate of the second point. And then when you plug them into the formula, you're essentially taking the second x coordinate, which is three, minus the first x coordinate, which is negative two. So we have three minus a negative two, which actually turns into three plus two, which is where the five came from, okay? Now over here, we're gonna take y2, which is four, minus y1, which is one. So we have four minus one, which is where the three came from, okay? And then here, if you square three, you get five, you get 25. And if you square three, you get nine. So together, you get the square root of 34. And then if you type that in your calculator, it will give you the approximate decimal place. Okay, and then it says the distance is about this amount. It says you can use the Pythagorean theorem to check your distance. Um, all you have to do is make sure you use the exact value and not the grounded value, okay? So they said, will the hypotenuse squared equal one side squared plus the other side squared? Well, we know that one side's measurement, right? 
the difference in the y value, the difference in the x values was five. So we know that that is five units long. And the distance in the y values, we figured out to be three. So we know that that length is three, okay? Essentially what we're doing is we have these points here. This is the D you're trying to check. And once I know that difference in the Y coordinates, I know that's three units and I know that this is five units. Now, again, my picture is not to scale because obviously this one would be longer since it's five, but you get the idea. So do more like something like this, okay? So you're saying this side squared plus this side equals this side squared plus that side squared. So on this side, you get 34. And here, the square and the square root cancel and you do get 34. So the distance does check out, okay? So now that we know how to find the distance between two points, another helpful piece of information is being able to find the midpoint between two points. So essentially, you have two points. And if you imagine a line you want to basically pot a point in the middle of that line, okay? Um, and the midpoint can be found by using the midpoint formula. Essentially, all you're doing is finding the average of the two x values and the average of the two y values. You're adding those two x values together and then dividing by the number of x values, which was two x values. And similarly for y. We're just adding up our y coordinates and then we're dividing by two. Okay, so an example it says find the midpoint of the line segment joining the points negative five, negative three, and nine, three. So again, you want to label, I'm going to call this the x coordinate of the first point, y coordinate of the first point, x coordinate of the second point y coordinate of the second point. And according to the midpoint formula, I'm going to add negative 5 and 9 and divide by 2. And then I'm going to add negative 3 and 3 and divide by 2. Well, negative 5 divided by negative 5 plus 9 is 4 divided by 2. And negative 3 plus 3 is 0 divided by 2. And so that's where we end up with 2 and 0. And then if you were to draw the points, negative five and negative three is in this location. And then positive nine and positive three is in this location. And the midpoint you found is two and zero. So if you imagine that line connecting the two points you started with, this point lies directly in the middle of that line segment. Okay, so now we have another example. So in this problem, it says a football quarterback throws a pass from the 28 yard line to the um, 40 yards from the sideline, okay? So he is 28 at the 28 yard line, but 40 yards from the sideline. Um, now a wide receiver catches the pass on the five yard line, 20 yards from the same sideline. Okay, and it says, this is also shown in the figure and how long is the pass, okay? Um, so what they did was they, this is the sideline that they're talking about. And so the first location is they were 40 away from that sideline, but on the 28 um, yard line. And then here they were five yards away from the sideline, but on the 20 yard line. Okay, um, so let's see, let's see. If they wanna know what, how long the pass is, what they're asking for is the distance here, okay? So if I wanna find the distance, the first thing I need to do is put those uh, that information that they gave me into points. So notice that in the figure, it did already put the points and they gave me this information first 
So this is the point that I would call X1 and Y1. And they gave me the other information second. So this is the point that I would call X2 and Y2. So when we're trying to find the distance, we're gonna put in that distance formula. And so see, this is X, uh, and it doesn't matter. I called this one X1 and Y1 and X2 and Y2. And if you notice, if I follow the same formula, X2, which is 20, minus X1, which is 40 squared, plus Y2, which is 5, minus Y1, which is 28 squared, I get negative 20 squared plus negative 23 squared. But then at the end, I still end up with the square root of 400 plus 529 which will still give me the same value as um, they have there, okay? So it doesn't really matter what order the X's and the Y, the X's are together or what order the Y's are. Just as long as you're subtracting the two X values together and you're subtracting the Y values. So see, they did it the differently, but they still ended up with the same result, okay? And so then the square root of 929, if I hit my double arrow, is about 30.47. And they just rounded to the nearest yard, so it's about 30 yards. We do have some practice problems in this section. So it says, find the coordinate of the point on the x axis and four units left of the y axis. So if I draw this, my point is on the x axis, but four units left one, two, three, four. So it'd be on the x axis, but to the left. What would those coordinates be? Well, I did go left in the negative direction, four units but I did not go up or down in the Y direction. So the Y coordinate would just be zero. And so the answer to this one is negative four comma zero. Now, number two says determine which quadrant or quadrants um, a point could be located if the X were greater than zero, meaning the X were positive and the Y was less than zero, meaning the Y value was negative. Let's think about it. If the X value is positive, it's over here on this side, not in this side. And then if the Y value is negative, then that's gonna put me down here in this quadrant. And if you remember the names, it's quadrant one, two, three, four. So I will live in quadrant four. And they usually use Roman numerals to represent the quadrants. Now, the last one says, or it's not the last one, but the second to last one says, find the distance between these two points. So I'm going to call x1, y1, x2, y2, and I'm going to write the distance formula. So x2 is 0 minus x1, which is 5 y2 is 20 minus y1, which is 8. So I get negative 5 squared plus 12 squared, which is 25 plus 144, which is the square root of 169, which is actually a nice square root. It's 13. On clear square root of 169 is just a regular 13. And so the distance is 13 units. Okay, the last problem is one where they're going to ask me to find the midpoint. So here it says find the midpoint between those same two points. So again, this is the x coordinate of the first point, y coordinate of the first point x coordinate of the second point, y coordinate of the second point. So I'm going to use my midterm formula, midpoint formula. 
and that's x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2. So let's see what we get. We have x1, which is 5, plus x2, which is 0, y1, which is 8, plus 20 for y2. So we end up with 5 over 2, comma 28 over 2. So we end up with 2.5 comma 14. And this is a coordinates. Or you can leave it as a fraction, 5 over 2 and 14. It's just a graph it. You kind of want to see the decimal version. So you kind of know where that is. If I look at 5 over 2 and I don't think of a decimal, I really don't know where that is going to be at. Okay. Even if, if I saw 15 over 16, I wouldn't know where that is, okay? Um, I'd have to convert it to a decimal to just get an idea of where it is. Um, but that is it for P.6. So it's basically just how to plot points, how to write the um, coordinates of points, how to find the distance between two points, and then how to find the midpoint between two points.